Welcome to a measurement video. This one is exploring error in area and volume calculations. Anytime an area or a volume calculation is made uh, based on a measurement of the original dimensions, we've got to allow for some margin for error. We've got to consider some margin for error and there's a systematic way of um, accounting for that error that we think of. For example, if we measure a rectangle as having dimensions of 3 centimeters by 5 centimeters, let's have a consider about what margin for error we might like to um, consider. Uh, 3 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Now, before rounding off to 3 centimeters and 5 centimeters, we could have had dimensions as small as 2.5 that got rounded off to be 3. And uh, the second dimension could be as small as 4.5 if it then got rounded up to be 5 centimeters. So they're sort of like the smallest original dimensions that we could have had before we rounded off to a whole numbers there. Uh, but they could also be almost as large as 3.5 and rounded down and almost be as big as 5.5 but be rounded down to 5. Not quite there because 5 or more we'd round up but it could be almost as big as 3.5 and 5.5. That's the system we use here. So uh, that's sort of the margin for errors we take into account before we quote a 3 centimeter by 5 centimeter rectangle. So if we then do an area calculation on those smallest and largest scenarios, we have an area calculation and an area of a rectangle is just multiplying the length by the breadth. So we'd just be doing 2.5 by 4.5. We'd get an area calculated as small as 11.25 centimeters squared. But if we use the larger of the two, um, so, so that 11.25 centimeters squared, we'd call that the smallest possible area. And if we use the larger of the dimensions and calculate that way, we get 19.25 centimeters, and we'd call that the largest possible area. So we've got the smallest possible area by using the smaller of the dimensions before we round it off to be three and five. And we've got the largest possible area by using these dimensions, the larger of the possible ones before we round it down to three and five. That's how we get the smallest possible area and the largest possible area. We have a think about what the numbers could have been, both large and small, before they became rounded to three and five centimeters. So a rectangular dance floor, this is an example question here we'll go through. A rectangular dance floor was measured at 6.3 meters by 4.7 meters. First part of the question, what's the smallest possible area? Okay, 6.3 by 7, 4.7, sorry. Uh, before rounding, it could have been as small as 6.25 and then get rounded up to one decimal place there as 6.3. And it could have been as small as the second dimension there could have been as small as 4.65 before it got rounded up to 4.7. So if we use those two smallest uh, versions of those dimensions, the area calculation would be 6.25 by 4.65 ended up as 29.0625 meters squared. So we're just using the smallest versions of each of the dimensions before the rounding up might have taken place to find our smallest possible area. So we'd say the smallest possible area of the dance floor is 29 point blah blah blah. What's the largest possible area of the dance floor? So let's have a think about the dimensions before they got rounded down to 6.3. They could have been almost as big as 6.35. Uh, anything uh, below 6.35 would have been rounded down to 6.3. And this uh, second dimension could have been as big as, almost as big as 4.75 before it got rounded down to 4.7. So if we calculate our area based on those two larger scenarios, our largest possible area of the dance floor, we could quote at 30.1625 meters squared. So we're just using the largest possible scenario of the original dimensions and calculating our area from that. Now the last part of this uh, example, it says to calculate the area of the dance floor to an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, I don't know whether you remember your significant figures rules, but these originals here, 
We start counting our significant figures at the first non-zero digit as we move from left to right. So that's our first significant figure and that's our second significant figure. So we'd say that that 6.3 has two significant figures and once again that has two significant figures there. So our original uh, dimensions have two significant figures. We'll keep that in mind as we go through the question. So we've got 6.3 by 4.7, that's our original dimensions, and they both have two significant figures as I just said. So if we calculate that out, we get 29.61 meters squared. But uh, mathematically speaking, it's um, inappropriate or sort of a bit of a stretch for us to quote anything more than two significant figures. We have, this is our first significant figure, our second significant figure. At the moment, we have four significant figures as the quote for our final answer. Now, because each of our uh, original dimensions only had two significant figures, well, the, that's, then it's appropriate for us to just quote two significant figures. But when we do that, we need to round off appropriately as well. So what we'll do there is we'll quote the two significant figures now we could quote 29, but we need to, anytime we round off, we need to check that next digit and see if it rounds up. And, and a 0.6 will round up that 29 to be 30. So what we've got here is two significant figures in our answer. Uh, and that's appropriate because we had two significant figures in each of the dimensions in our question. So that's what makes it appropriate. We've got the same amount of significant figures in our final answer rounded to two significant figures. So our area that we should quote here appropriately is 30 meters squared. Next example here, a box is measured having these dimensions 8.2, 6.7 and 4.1 centimeters between which two values, this is another way they ask this same question here, but between which two values does the volume of the box lie? Now a box, let's presume it's a rectangular prism, volume would be uh, just multiplying that length times breadth times height out and uh, so I'll see how we'll do that 8.2 6.7 that could have been as small as 8.15 but rounded up to 8.2 and 6.65 and rounded up to 6.7 uh, 4.05 before it got rounded up to 4.1 so these are the smallest possible scenarios of these um, of these original dimensions now it could also be as large as or almost as large as 8.25 and got rounded down to 8.2, 6.75 that got rounded down to uh, 6.7 and almost as big as 4.15 that uh, was rounded down to 4.1. So that's the smallest possible dimensions and the largest possible dimensions. Now if we do our volume calculations based on all the smallest ones, we will get an answer there of 219 point whatever. Um, that would be our smallest um, possible volume calculation. If we used all the bigger scenarios for our original dimensions, we get 231 point etc. So there's two uh, volume calculations there. They're different from each other because we're at the first one we're taking all the smaller ones, the second one we're using all the bigger ones and uh, working out our volume calculation there. That's the way we get our two um, possible values and we'll say that the volume of the box lies between that first one and the second one, 219.449, etc. And uh, the volume would be lying between that and 231.1, etc. So we uh, think about the rounding. We get the smallest possible versions of it and the largest possible versions of it before the rounding. And uh, we can use each of those for different uh, volume calculations to find our two values. Second bit, what value should be recorded? What's the sensible uh, calculation here to record? Now these have significant figures, two significant figures each time. So our final volume, we're going to be going to say, uh, should have two significant figures in it as well. So if we just calculated that out, we'd get a full version of uh, 225.254. That has a total of six significant figures in it. Now it's not appropriate for us to record any more, uh, any greater number of significant figures than that what, that was recorded from our original dimensions.
So if we rounded that off to two significant figures to match the original dimensions there, we have 230. Now be a bit careful here. That looks like it's got three significant figures, but we're only counting the first two digits as significant, and we're allowed to have that third digit as a zero just to hold its place because otherwise we'd get 23 here and that wouldn't be a very good representation of 225-ish. So we've rounded that off to the nearest 10 I suppose there to allow us to have two significant figures like we have in the originals uh, and uh, also in our answer there as well. So that's uh, the appropriate way to record the volume of the box, multiply those out and round our answer, our final answer, so that it's got the same number of significant figures as the original dimensions had in the question. So we rounded that off to the same amount of significant figures. That's an appropriate way of uh, expressing the volume of the box. So any time an area or a volume calculation is made based on a measurement of the original dimensions, we're uh, considering some margin for error. And we uh, have a systematic way of doing that. So uh, check the video out again if you're not sure. Quite a lot happened in that video fairly fast. But uh, I hope that helps. So that's how we go through um, the error in area and volume calculations. PeterBlakeMaths.com. See you again soon.